Let the electrons have, do what they will. Okay, it's happening. We're we've we've we're committed now. It's too late to turn back. It's it's <laughs> it's Lou and and Reverend Ike. The Rubicon has been crossed. Look That's out. right. We're we're in it to win it. Keep your eyes on the prize. Uh, so yeah, Isaac and I are. He's celebrating my Mercury retrograde moment. I was just mopping up the floor downstairs because I managed to leave the hot water heater on. Home oh, appliance fail. <laughs> when I walked out, as I walked out the door, sailed out the door, leave the thing going. Yeah, no problem. So, how are you today, my friend? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll go with that. Yeah, you know, yeah. Today's much better than yesterday, and we can get into the why. Sure. Um, sure. Because apparently yesterday was quite challenging for many folks. Sure. Um, yeah, oh, I could, we could start with that. Yeah, let's um, go with that. You know, because basically that's where I left it last week. Po yeah. You know, we'll get together post new moon in that's some right. form or another. That's right. Um, so we had that little event on Friday and yeah. um, all weekend long, it's a gift that keeps on giving. And yeah. it's still giving, you know, it's yeah. still like interesting. I, I would just, uh, while I'm is, is kind it of the, bringing that up, I'll get the chart open sure, for today. Sure. Is, isn't the solar uh, quite active right now as well? Um, we're, we're entering. We oh, are okay. at the very beginnings of okay. the next solar maximum cycle. Right. Which we have not had a serious one since 2000 to 2002. So have mercy. Um, I'm expecting, a, a, I, let's just say I'm expecting good fireworks from this one because the solar minimum was so quiet. Okay. Um, it, was, okay. uh, it was the quietest one in uh, over 100 years. Uh, astronomers were puzzled <laughs> by the lack of sunspot activity. Okay. Um, okay. So if, the, if, if Godzilla yeah. were to rise out of the ocean, Isaac, I would not be surprised. That this well, Fukushima is releasing 1.2 million tons of radioactive waste into the Pacific. So, you know, nobody remembers the original Godzilla movie from 1953 Raymond with Burr. Raymond Raymond Burr, exactly. See, I got you. And now. <laughs> the whole reason that that monster was created or mutated from something else was because of the dumping of radioactive waste into the Pacific Ocean. So, you know, we may have a real life Godzilla on our hands before the end of the decade. I uh, hope it stays in Japan, but it, it's, it's, how should we say, beyond farcical. <laughs> yes, they never stay in Japan. That's the only problem with monsters. They, yeah, yeah. And, you know, one of the best lines from that movie. Yeah. Is, there is no such thing as monsters. <laughs> 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 or, or, or the crowds running for their lives and you hear over and over in the soundtrack, oh, my baby. <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> Repeated, looped, you know. It's sure, like, sure. Well, you're, you're a much deeper student of the original <laughs> Godzilla than I am. I have to give you full marks for that. The, well, I, I, would, I would say the, the, the Matthew Broderick version was pretty good. Uh, it was pretty, pretty thrilling, that, that particular remake. But, mm -hmm. the, um, you know, Godzilla aside, the, um, the Fukushima factor comes into play in, in more subtle ways than just nuclear radiation. Yes, um, yes. And so we're, we are seeing an uptick uh across the board on COVID cases and some people might say well it's the foldy pcr test well sure. maybe it's that sure um that's my vote but that's one possible you know and and so i come i fall back on scientific curiosity here and say all right well what else is correlating um things and i'm, I'm not going to drift into this subject too fast because we haven't even discussed the post new moon or mercury retro or As as, as Wash, you like, as you washing like, machines friend. falling apart or whatever. It's all good. We're in your capable hands. <laughs> you know, here I am in Mercury and Scorpio, and I have not backed up my hard drives. Am I crazy? Am I nuts? Well, uh, take my washing machine accident to, as a warning from the guy. Yeah, this is yeah. this is your last chance. Exactly. <laughs> turn back now. Yes. Yeah, turn back now, <laughs> because yeah. All ye who enter here, you know, give up Abandon all hope. All hope. Yes. Yeah. yes. But you've got you've got it handed to to the stellar influences for uh, all kinds of things. Yesterday, uh, before I come back to the, to yeah. the Godzilla moment, the yes. um, the overriding feeling, and we we had taken a weekend off, as you knew, we went yes. down to the Suffolk Coast. Did you have coast. a good one? Did you have a good it time? It was amazing down there. It was actually sunny. Right. We only got sprinkled on once. Is this uh, it was Portsmouth? actually Suffolk, which is okay. uh, Southwold on the east, east Anglia. It's South, okay. Suffolk is one county southeast of here. 
Okay. Norfolk's right next to us. So okay. both we board, border in the North Sea. Um, right, right. So we stayed in a, a great little Airbnb right on the beach, practically. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, and only about a 15 minute drive from Southwold, which is the coolest little beach coastal town okay. that I've encountered so far in the UK. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll book my ticket. Sounds great. I could use it. That one is good. Whitby yeah. is great up on and further north above okay. Yorkshire. Okay. Whitby is good, but that's on the north, north sea side. Okay. Uh, of course, the west side is a whole different kettle of fish. You have Cornwall, you have uh, Bristol, right. you have all those places. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, but here, um, this is really a gem and we had a great time. And we were completely like chilling and relaxing. We drove back here late Sunday, uh, Saturday, Sunday afternoon, and all of a sudden we got home and was just completely exhausted. And all day Monday was like walking through Triacle right. or right. setting cement. Sure. sure. Tired, sleepy, can't get one foot in front of another, metaphorically. Right. Uh, sometimes physically. Sure. Um, one close friend of mine said, uh, you know, after we, uh, we had a brief Zoom catch up on one of her uh, meditation projects I'm working on, she said, I, I made dinner, but I don't know how I got through it. You know, she's <laughs> just so tired. I don't yeah. know how I did it. Yeah. Um, so many other people were commenting. Uh, I didn't say anything on Facebook, on social media anywhere. And people were just going, I'm so tired. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, so what's going on? Um, I looked at the chart for yesterday, and we had Mercury, of course, retrograde at nine degrees Scorpio, Juno right next to it at nine degrees Scorpio, and Uranus right across from it at nine degrees Taurus. Um, wow. To me, all this retrogradation and in signs that are normally like happy-go-lucky, skip down the sidewalk, I like to action kind of thing. Yep. Uh, Mars, of course, retrograde in in Aries, which is like, you know, a pent up tiger walking back and forth in a cage. Yep. Um, so all of these retrograded gradations hanging up into some sort of pull push pull mode, um, because Mars is squaring Pluto and Jupiter exactly today and yesterday. Uh, Mercury Juno is opposing Uranus exactly. So we have all of this retrogradation saying, foot on the gas, foot on the brake. And the ending, the end of, ending of that is, is the sense of having to move and take action and not knowing what to do with the pent up energy. And if, if anything is worse than pent up energy is the exhausting nature of holding that kind of energy for too long. Mm. Um, because you can where, you know, it's like you burn up the clutch, you burn out the brakes, mm -hmm. uh, you burn up the engine. Mm -hmm. And so today's a different energy slightly. And I'm just wondering anybody who's going to be listening to this in the next day or two, if they did have symptoms like this, or they have had symptoms in the last three weeks or so since Pluto went, uh, went direct mm -hmm. of tripping down memory, memory lane is what I call it. So, you know, we're looking for symptoms. We're looking for people to sign in and like just say, yeah, that was going on for me. Mm -hmm. Spontaneous uh, emotional sentimentality, thinking mm -hmm. back to the past, um, regrets about relationships, regrets, any kind of uh, dreams that have, you know, all of a sudden people from your past have shown up and gone, hey, remember me? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have a score to settle, or maybe we don't have a score to settle. And boy, that was really crappy what you did to me. Those kind of things are coming up. Or longings, deep longings, deep, um, I don't know, these kind of like, seren you know, this, this kind of uh, almost sentimental longings for certain things from one's childhood or one's mm. past or wishing, oh, I wish I could have done that different or I wish I could have said that mm. instead of not saying that. Mm -hmm. um, I think remorse, as, and, remorse and regrets. That's what, well, uh, yeah, know. but not so much. It's not like it's not, it doesn't seem to have the same feeling attached to it of guilt or, you know, finality. What it had for me and what it had for everybody I talked to yesterday, who was, who's all of a sudden gone. Yeah. I've been, you know, been experiencing this is a sense of what's done is done. Oh yeah. It's past is past. And we are basically feeling now at sort of an existential level, the split. The yeah. split is, is that, you know, there are parallels collapsing all over the place. Yes. Um, 
Yes. And that is creating this sort of sense of like, well, that was the old me. Yeah. And the new me isn't landed yet. And the yeah. new, the new um, potentials are not yeah. landed yet. Yeah. And so it, it's sort of like, again, exemplified by these transits right now of being kind of between there and wherever. Sure, you know? sure. That and whatever this is. And yes. Yes. This ain't there yet. Sure. Uh, an astrologer a long time ago did my chart, just said, you know, with uh, with what I was going through at the time, which was the Kundalini awakening, was, you know, you have to wait for the replacement parts to come in. And waiting is not something that we are good at. Patience is, uh, you know, more than a virtue. It's a pain. You know, it's a real pain. Waiting is the hardest part. Yeah. Not so when we go it. into that, when we go into that place of, I don't want this to be happening. I want something else to be happening. Um, that's ego mind just going, it's painful here. I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, closure. The word closure comes to Bingo. mind. Yeah. Bingo. Okay. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. That's what it is. So it's like closing a chapter or closing a lifetime or saying, well, this is my fourth or fifth lifetime in this lifetime. Sure. And sure. that yes. is certainly something I think everybody who listens to our kind of stuff. Yes can resonate with and saying, you know, I'm, I may not be old chronologically or look at, but man, it's the mileage, you know, well, I feel well, exhausted. <laughs> yes, 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 exactly. I, uh, uh, Isaac, I, I raised my hand. We're the old souls club, you know? Yeah. Um, the old yeah. souls is like old retreads. It's like, you know, it's, it isn't about chronological logical age in my cosmic perspective. All souls are the same age. Sure. Well, let me, but it's I, like, what have we gone through? What sort of, sure. Sure. What sort of uh, experiences have given us an edge to be able to look back and say, you shouldn't do that. Sure. <laughs> sure. Well, if I may, let me just share with you a little yeah. bit from, from my, uh, my teacher here, uh, Patricia Cota Robles, who is doing uh, in this time frame, started on Saturday, doing a two hour live workshop six days in a row. She calls it her Congress of Illumination and it's her, her 34th annual. And so, so much of what you have uh, expressed there really relates to what she's been talking about, which basically is exactly this, that uh, everyone who is, um, you know, getting these downloads, which it takes a lot of physical and emotional, excuse me, patience. Uh, wherewithal. You know, <laughs> yes, wherewithal, uh, uh, you know, uh, is, um, is really deepening our connection to the higher self, which she calls the I am presence. And that actually over the weekend, uh, she says, uh, according to Almighty God, that uh, we have turned a corner and closed a chapter, and we are getting ready for the planetary reboot. She calls the whole six-day process a planetary reboot. So, well, yeah, as opposed to the Great Reset, <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, 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 no payment from the World Economic Forum on this one. This oh. is the other side. Yeah, yeah. But see, you know, that's the thing that most people are confused by. If I can interject. Sure, please. Um, I count on it. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, I think this is one of the things that is the, the subtlety of seduction. And the subtlety of seduction in our era is the subtlety of seduction of technology is our God, will save us from everything, solve everything. And, and the digital AI God or the transhumanist agenda, yeah. agenda is essentially an artifice for what? we can do and some of us are already doing organically so it's it's a copycat thing it's the same thing that john lash talks about in his sure. um his explanation of how the archons deceive or or, or prey on human foibles and sure. weaknesses mentally yeah. is the idea of uh counter mimicry and and it's it copies something true and twists it just enough Sure. So that we still think it's true, yeah. but actually it's a deception or yeah, it's yeah. false. It, sorry, sorry, I don't want to use fake news. It's not fake news. It's false intel. And well, uh, it's, it's, dishonest. it's dishonest. Well, it's dishonest because, you know, when you're dealing with a, uh, uh, a part of divine intelligence that basically doesn't even know itself as being intelligent um, and has no emotional reference point whatsoever and is hostile to humanity animically then basically everything becomes a game of creating chaos. And, sure. and, and sure. you know, it's based on what? Envy. <laughs> so, it's, sure. you know, well, envy is, is probably, or jealousy is probably an extreme word here, but envy uh, has extremes to it too. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, no, I agree with 99% of that, my friend. That's, yeah. that's, that's really right on. I, you know, I mean, is, you know, the global reset, as we know, mm -hmm. seems, to be, seems to be the organizing force uh, behind Bill and uh, uh, Anthony and a few other, uh, you know, club members uh, who are in the club, as George Carlin said, and we ain't in the club. Uh, yeah, you know, we are not in the club. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They and they're, don't they're care about table. you. No, exactly. They're running the table. And, uh, but that's that's what they see. That's the job of really being awake. Uh, that if you want to really like put it in a nutshell, yeah. it's like the only authority you need to listen to is inside of you. Well, now you're now you're absolutely going where I was hoping we would go in our next chat, which is what is the authority and how do we yeah. Have align with that and how do we channel that as you and I both know and how do we work with that okay well we can make that we can make that a topic I, I mean, to sure this, for next week because our, our buddy all right all right I don't want to I don't want to push the envelope here but is we can that, we uh, can let this percolate okay. through this talk okay. but you know right. but if you really want to have a focused one then yeah sure sure uh, you know again I'm happy to look out the window and and let you drive it's always a pleasure <laughs> It's always a pleasure, you know. Well, it's, it's you know, but you're the host of the show. You've well, got to, well, you've got to at least grab the wheel once in a while or play with the yeah, stick. Yes, yes, or, or otherwise you're falling asleep over there. <laughs> and, I got the I got the picture. Yes. You know, it's not a bus with a sign that says "Do not speak to the driver." That's good, I, and I I do appreciate that. I and I and I respect the driver enormously. Uh, so so Saturn, Saturn and authority, right? Saturn in authority, Saturn in control, Saturn in structure, you know, there's a lot of apologists, even in my line of work for, for Saturn's uh, uh, function and usability. Um, and, but that's, that's at a purely astronomical, astrological level. At a uh, mythological level, Saturn is not a nice guy, I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, I was just having this discussion with a friend of mine in Ireland just before this show. Right. Um, is that wait till Pluto moves into Aquarius in 2024 and watch the structures crumble because okay. here's why you're moving, you know, Pluto's, you know, doing a wrecking ball job through the Capricornian control mechanism ruled by Saturn, right? right. Aquarius right. in the old astrology was the ruler of Aquarius. Now Uranus is. Uranus being... Uranus is the sky god, the sky god, and the sky god is like Zeus. It's like, nobody does it better than me, okay? okay. Right. I will rain down lightning bolts to get my way. Okay. So, you, you know, Uranus and Saturn are always considered in mytho mythology and in the uh, astrological realm to be yeah. counterpoints to each other. Saturn nice. is control, right. Uranus is freedom. Or chaos. Well, chaos is sometimes necessary in order sure, to break sure. down this. Yes, I and open not, the fist. Yeah, absolutely. I just think it's important that it's not always a sweet love song, you know. Uranus. No, somebody once described it to me about <laughs> you know about the effect of of my son Uranus on some people. It's like you know, and, and it wasn't it wasn't kind. It was from a woman in astrology. He says, you know, you end up leaving some people in the ditch, looking up at you in in a daze and wondering what the hell hit them, and it's like. Uranus's response to that is, well, what are you complaining for? At least you're more awake now. Well, it's yes. very transpersonal. Yes, my friend, <laughs> you're you're way up the mountain, brother Isaac. You know, the air's very thin <laughs> well, up here. Very thin. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> on some level, everyone's at the mountain. Everybody uh, wants course, what? What does everybody really want? Let's 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 sure. put out the question out. What is well, what is it that is the most not even quintess yeah, it's quintessential. What is the quintessential thing that every living thing wants? especially humans. Well, it's to me, I mean, you know, there's the pyramid of needs and love is at the top. You know, you build up your safety, love and support towards uh -huh. greater love and freedom. There's the word. Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. And you know what? If love is the definition of love or one of the definitions of love, and this is the one I love from good old Neil Walsh, is allowing. Allowing denotes automatically the freedom to respect what anybody else's choices about that's freedom good. are. Yeah, that's so good. I remember an old poem that was handed to me by a close friend who was supporting me through the first year of the Kundalini Awakening. He says, I respect life in any form it takes and in every choice it makes. That's good. Yeah. Okay, and that's just part of a longer piece. But yeah. the important thing here to remember is that love always allows. And if we look at that as the subtext to Iranian chaos, 
It's about allowing for the dissolution of what no longer serves, or as Neil says, observing what doesn't work or observing what does serve versus what doesn't anymore. Mm -hmm. And Uranus is the absolute grandmaster, the, 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 the ser master of ceremonies for saying, uh-uh, this is not alignment sure. anymore. With sure. spirit, out of here. Sure. Sudden and dramatic change relative to truth. That's my phrase yeah. for Uranus. And you know what creates the chaos? The resistance to it. Sure. Sure, that's well said. That's exactly right. And isn't that the story of our day, my friend? <laughs> I'll drink to that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll take a point on the on the board for that one. Thank you very um, much. Yes. You got it. You got it. Yes. And if you, you know, it, let it let it show, let it glow. Um, yes. But the you know, we come back to the why is things on an uptick so drastically? Well, you know, Again, I have to re reference Neil and his abundance, talk on abundance. Whenever you call something into the space, whenever you declare yourself to be something or do something, exact opposite shows up in equal proportion. If, if, and, and this is why for a long time I thought maybe doing nothing is the best strategy. And if at the end of book three, one of the three conditions right. for happiness and freedom is there's nothing you have to do, right. as we right. talked the last time, right. then you don't set up a sort of escalating balancing act between so-called light and dark or that which does not serve versus that which does. Uh, um, so anytime, I've wondered this too, I wondered about this, is that anytime you try to push light or energy or, or a choice or an intention into the collective consciousness with any kind of impetus or force, it will push back. That which is not that, the not that will push back even harder, creating this ladder effect. All right. Sure. Sure. You know, so it goes crazier out there because there's more of that which is true and that which is light permeating or um, uh, creating the conditions for transformation to happen. Isn't there yet? Conditions but it's our choice. It's not God's choice. Right. You know, I, I differ from Patricia on this one because, you know, God's just basically saying, if you're me and I'm you, then whatever you choose is what I want. Okay. So, and if that's the case, it isn't in anybody else's hands. And so well, it's our responsibility to yeah. get clear about what that essential truth is. And if what we want is freedom, then how do we get from A to B? Or yeah, I, I promise you, you're you're not on a different uh, side of the library. Either. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just saying yes. I may approach it differently or say it differently. Yes, the, exactly. The, 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 last the whole yes. point yes. is is that there. Um, that was one of the most freeing things for me to listen to uh, at that time. Was you know uh, Neil's book? Read that book. Uh, what does God want? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> is the answer, the short answer. So I read at the same time a book by uh, Stephen Harrison called um, uh, Doing Nothing. And, you know, and there's, there's a certain Zen kind of quality to that, of just sitting back and saying and observing. And I think right now is really an opportune time for observing, not for necessarily pushing. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Um, yeah, I just want to uh, uh, very quickly, uh, I just pushed a, a uh, put a cartoon, put a cartoon on uh, on my Facebook page, which is a Zen master and his, his students sitting before him and they've given him an empty box and he says, thanks for nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. it's a good yeah. one. That was like my is nothing sacred uh, a week or two ago. <laughs> well. <laughs> My favorite American fictional author, Tom Robbins, once said, everything is sacred, nothing is sacred. Yes, well, and Bob Dylan, of course, you know. Yeah, he uh, also said, be your, you know, be, be, you know, don't wait for being rescued. Be, rescue yourself. Be your, oh, your own, be your own UFO. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, that, that's, yes, that's, that's right. That's right. And that's what we're, we're but, all we're all working on that. But not everybody is in that place. And this is something that I see right now with, you know, your country is going into level five lockdown. Apparently it's in the wings for here. Um, I hate to bring people back to contemporary well, occurrences. This is, but, this is our buddy Saturn, you know, it's, it's yeah. squeezing and shaking and uh, uh, stepping on everyone's toes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do feel strongly that this is, this is the thing with, with a, a an archetype like Uranus being retrograde and Mars, you know, uh, Mercury hammering it from one side and Mars being retrograde and feeling like 
Tiger pacing up and down and squaring to Saturn, squaring to Jupiter in Capricorn is just saying, no, you can't move, we're going to tighten the yeah, grip. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it explodes, of course. Well, let's go back to Star Wars 1, Princess Leia to Governor Tarkin. The more you squeeze, the more systems that'll fall through your fingers. And this sure. is what's going to happen. And I don't yeah. think anybody's really prepared for it. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure that's true. <laughs> I'm sure that's true, Isaac, because we, we all <laughs> sense this great wave of energy coming. Like we're saying, even this yeah. with the sun, you know, and, yeah. um, you know, um, there's divine timing about all this. So mm -hmm. I, my chat earlier uh, today was with my buddy Miguel Dean, who's a, a poet uh, in, in the UK. And cool. uh, yeah, and he was saying the same thing that uh, he's not pushing, he's not, uh, you know, hustling, he's just chilling and being very mellow. And he's living in Glastonbury now. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's seeing uh, the drinking and the drugs and uh, the highs yeah. and the lows of all that, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, like, that's a study in contrast. I lived oh, there yeah. for almost a year. I know. Right, right. Sure. It's, you know, like Venice Beach or Sedona, these places attract uh, the light and the dark, you know, big time and it gets exaggerated. But I'm just saying, yep. any of us who are paying attention to the cosmic weather as we as we're all striving to do are being very deliberate, moving slowly, not pushing ourselves, paying attention to the feedback, the signs, our bodies, as you said, all of that. So. Yeah, that was something, uh, somebody else posted something today. Oh God, what was it? Oh, her name escapes me. But something about, you know, paying attention to the, the body is like the, the barometer, the canary in the coal mine about right. what is going on energetically and so forth. Um, to that end, um, I can kind of wend my way back to the Godzilla moment. <laughs> fine, fine, be the best. Uh, the, the huge, exponential um, rise in, in diagnosed cases, supposedly, um, um, and how that's being used as leverage or being, uh, oh, you, yes. you know, yeah. uh, to create the lockdown situation right. and, and right. the ensuing economic and personal emotional turmoil that's going to create. Yes. Um, Not to mention our laws one, being thrown overboard. Yes. Who? The laws. The laws. Oh, yeah, overboard. yeah. Yeah, no, no due process in creating any of this. So, right. um, and, and police even being indemnified against being prosecuted for breaking the law, or pharmaceutical companies being uh, indem well, non indemnified yes, yes, against any kind of any kind of reactions or sure. deaths that may ensue sure. from sure. from any of that. Sure, but that was that was thirty years ago, helping the perfect storm. This is just the last few weeks, from what yeah. I'm reading. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we come back to. We come back to causal factors. Um, you know, if you're in germ theory, if you're following the Louis Pasteur route versus the Beauchamp route, then, then everything's caused by bugs of microscopic size. And, you know, we have no, uh, we, we, you know, mankind seems to have all been struggling against these sort of things. Bacteria, I put in a different class than viruses. Right. Um, Bacteria, yeah. we it was sort of like the poor. We, they are with you always. Right. Um, you, well, yeah. We yeah. also have viruses in our bodies naturally. They're just mm -hmm. inert. They're just and that do there. that do good things that help us to live exactly. Lives. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're basically a walking, you know, meat bag of viruses and bacteria and and chemical processes. But that some are are inert and dead, and some right. mostly most of them are sentient and alive. Right. right. Um, and so we have, this, all, we have this helpful. wonderful thing called the immune system which people seem to have forgotten about. Yeah, well, it's called, you know, health is a result of, of a perfect balance of things. This is what our Ayurvedic and uh, Taoist medicine come from. Right. Uh, it's balance of all forces yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in, in the Tao. So when you've got this, this situation of these sudden flare-ups in the last 135, 145 years of pandemics, one must question is, you know, is the soup that we swim in the toxic right. cause? Right, right, right. And so let's go back to the fact that there was a real quiet, fast, what do they call that, um, flattening of the curve Yeah. in May, June, July, right? Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden this massive uptick. Well, I did a little research. Good, good. <laughs> And the SpaceX Starlink broadband internet satellite launches 
Yes. I've been on a real tear ever since late spring, early okay. summer of 2020. Our old friend, G. G, Elon. Okay, yes. as of October 7th, 2020, there are now 775 Starlink sats in orbit, and there are planned 12 more launches of 60 sats each in the last two and a half months of this year. Wow. So as this has ramped up, started in May of 2019, and there was another launch in July, and then a bigger launch in both November and December of last year, coinciding with, of course, this whole yeah. flare-up in China. Yeah. Now, what's interesting about that is another wonderful astrologer, Francis, uh, Eric Francis Coppolino. I know him. Uh, Coppolino. Coppolino. Anyway, yeah. he, did, he did a little due, due diligence, and uh, nobody either remembers it or has lost the the, the capacity to sure. go back and look at the references that came out of uh, China uh, via the WHO, via uh, yeah. other uh, medical organizations, that the first 14 cases out of 43 that were diagnosed never, never had any contact with that supposedly wet market in Wuhan. Oh, yeah. No, it's man-made. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind about this, you know. Or, if is it man-made, due to a causal response to a disturbance or change in the etheric and electronic environment of the planet. Well, perhaps so, <laughs> but perhaps so, but you're good. You, well, know. you know, let's look at everything from a both and perspective, not sure. an either or. Sure. Well, the name Anthony Fauci seems to keep coming up in all the uh, CRISPR uh, creation of this uh, super bug and these super viruses and this kind of thing. And yeah. uh, I just posted today a new piece from uh, Bobby Kennedy uh, about uh, the virus and talking about how, or the, um, the vaccine, mm -hmm. the vaccine, which it will be the vaccine, uh, he, he says, is uh, messes with the DNA. And, um, you know, uh, is, uh, Gates and, and MIT have created all, all sorts of ways to track and trace. MIT is involved. Yes, what a shock. Jeez. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They had more sense. Well, um, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, again, brother, you know, we're trying to, um, we're trying to head them off at the pass, you know, as they say in the old Westerns, uh, we're trying to give, uh, give the town folk uh, a heads up that, uh, you know, uh, something is headed their way and it's not looking good. You Can know? we hire Clint Eastwood? Is it too late? No, go for it. <laughs> Let's do some Clint Eastwood. Yes. <laughs> we need some pale rider now. I'm, there we go. I, I'm saving up my fire sign theater. So, you know, <laughs> a perfect moment. <laughs> oh God! You you remember those guys? Sure. Well, this, everybody's I mean, going. Who the heck is Fireside Theater? Honestly, you and I are like a a, a party of two. You know, we, we could just go down uh, all these different uh, roads. It's a it's a joy. But um, you you I interrupt. Yeah, but you remember Guy Noir? You know, Guy Noir, Private Eye, of course. Third Eye, Third Eye. <laughs> uh, uh, wait, uh, Guy Noir. Wait. Guy Noir is uh, Garrison Keillor. That's right. Okay. That's, that's well, why I know. I'm thinking yes. of Farrisine Theater, which is, which is, um, oh, can't remember the character's name. I'm trying to think of it too. I'm trying to think of it too. Uh, Nick no, Danger. He's... Nick Danger. Nick Danger. Third Eye. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Very good. Very good. <laughs> yes. 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 This is our humor moment of the broadcast. This is where we're lightening up before we hit them with everything we've got. Yes. <laughs> Give them the good medicine first, then. Yeah, you know what anyway. I watched the, the other day? I, I found a, a, a brand new copy of um, one of my favorite films, uh, uh, Saving Private Ryan, which I don't Oof. know. If you're Brutal, to. but yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, the, just to bring a little manly warrior energy into the chat here, you know, and how uh, these guys, you know, faced un, unbelievable situations, impossible odds, and they somehow managed to, to, to you know, maintain their dignity and, and win a few rounds and, and beat the bad guys. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, this what uh, I chatted with Poppy Sprague. I don't know if you know Poppy. She's a friend. Mm -hmm. She's interesting. She's another fearless, uh, you know, uh, one of us. And um, she um, I was saying to her, this is the first time since the end of World War Two that a group of people are actively uh, organizing uh, and moving on us now. To, to take over the planet and uh, limit people's freedoms and consciousness. And, uh, you know, it's, I think it's good to speak the truth once in a while when you understand what it might be. I think that that's, that's absolutely essential. And I think this, this warrior mode, in fact, there was some woman who did a post on Facebook. It's like, I wish the men would grow, grow a pair and start mm. doing something mm. like they used to, you know? And, and 
I think that's completely valid. I think there is a certain um, feminization, yeah, feminization, or 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 cast, uh, energetic castration of males that occurred during the early part of the New Age era. Yeah. Um, I saw it happening and didn't say anything at the time, but I wasn't right. going to let myself get caught up in that. Right. Of you know the the so-called New Age wake guy. Um, well, you know, yes, and of- and basically. They, 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 the passivity, and when I when I started connecting dots in the mid middle part of last decade, I went, well, that explains a lot, you know, <laughs> like, you know, like, it's almost as if like the culture has been infiltrated or or or, or had things put in messages put in it that basically has created uh, a masculinity that is very susceptible to not reacting to what's happening, whether it's to women or men or, or transgender, or I don't care what it is. Right, right. They're basically no backbone to stand up to any kind of uh, oppressive tendencies. And I think that that's coming to an end. You watch what happens when Mars goes direct mid November. Oh yeah. In Aries. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, of course we've had, you know, Black Lives Matter, for better or worse, that those yeah. demonstrations were happening nightly. When Mars 90s. went into Aries. Yeah, Boom. yeah, yeah, yeah. So people were screaming and, and all sorts of stuff, you know. Um, yeah. But this action has to be very intelligently guided. This action has to be uh, as much as possible, not rooted in QAnon nonsense or any kind of Proud sure. Boys or any of that. Sure, stuff. sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no, that's the other side of the fence, but I agree with your mm-hmm. assessment as well, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that... Um, yeah, you know, um, I'm, I'm a proud advocate of power of now and proud advocate of also power of no. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, exactly, exactly. And, and I think it sadly is going to come to that, Isaac, that, uh, you know, we're really going to have to, uh, uh, like you're saying, you know, and I'm, I'm striving in my own way, as you can hear, to find our courage, okay. find our yeah. courage and find our voices and speak the truth to power and, and share it with people and people don't want to hear it and they don't agree with it and, and they don't like it. And they, you know, that's, you got to let the duck water roll off your back like a absolutely, duck, you know? Absolutely. So, you know, I'm going to borrow a phrase from empowered femininity. And so it's time to pull our big boy pants on. Sure. 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 Yes. Well, yeah, good. I'm glad men. we're giving each other a pep talk. It's, all, yeah. it's always important. There's no longer sitting around and just kind of going, well, you know, maybe, maybe, yeah. um, no, yeah. no more. There's not going to be much room or wiggle room for, for maybe, or let's wait and see what happens. Uh, because events are going to accelerate even further and faster over the next few years, especially sure. with the Pluto return sure. in the U.S. Sure. Um, I still am kind of, I have no, I'm not going to call anything as far as the U.S. presidential election to Halloween, but um, the Halloween October surprise. But I think when we get back to this thing about uh, radiation, we, we talk about solar effects, solar maximum cycle and how solar flares and CMEs affect all biological consciousness on this planet. And believe me, it does. <laughs> sure. I, I, have a, I have a front row seat from that, from the last solar maximum cycle. Right. Um, well, not the one in 2011, but the one before that. Right. Um, yeah. And it is, it, it does affect consciousness, the emotional body, the, the etheric body. It affects DNA. Um, you know, one could say it's an upgrade. I think it's a mutation. We don't know to what yet, but this is to me, the mutation that is occurring at an organic level and a spiritual level is the evidence of, uh, Sophia's correction. It is the planetary <clears throat> intelligence, uh, to which we are inexorably from and inexorably bound that is governing, um, the organic spiritual transhumanist, uh, dream of of Gaia Sophia and of the cosmos. It is not, that is the truth, whereas the counter mimicry is the AI transhumanism. Right, right, yes. Uh, Yes, Patricia would say, that's right. Fifth dimension, third and fourth dimension. And we're we're headed over here. The emotional 4D realm is that, oh, by the way, did you ever download that thing? Which one? Transcending the fourth dimension. I started it, I I never got back to it, sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'll yeah. send it to you again. It's a okay. must hear. Okay. okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe you have some people you want to share it with. But sure, I, sure. I agree that they, you know, the, 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 the whole setup in terms of the astro events are really kind of indicative of saying, okay, you know, 
maybe now is not right. Right now is not the time to act. Um, maybe it is important to sit and observe. And at the same time, we're going through this process of perils collapsing and and reviewing. We're doing past life review without the death process. So yeah. in a way, it's ego death. But we're going through this. You know, my my you know, seeing my life flash before my eyes the last three weeks and going, what's up with this? Sure. And and it, and it's like, but I'm still here. But well, it's because we're not done yet. Right. 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 Yeah. No, you're saying it very well. I mean, and as I say, this is this is the song I hear Patricia singing. So that's why the, one of the reasons I, I, I like what she has to say and, and work with her. But um, it's emotional uh, is what I want to say. You know, yeah. and this is this is the heart of the matter. And uh, I loved your phrase, uh, uh, Gaia Sophia, you know, uh, the divine feminine, the emotion, the spirit. Uh, the love of life, the love for life, the love and respect of our all. feelings are being our guide because they are yeah. the com- they are the stuff of soul. I mean, Greg Braden's yeah. been harping on that for twenty five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we're saying, uh, the men of the world, uh, as you and I know, I mean, I, I, this is Miguel and I said the same thing. Most of our clients are still women. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, truly, true. You know, are they okay? There it is. And uh, and um, you know, it's because the women have the emotional body that they're connected to, and most men are still alienated from their emotional body. Like we're saying, that's why there yeah. isn't uh, um, a, 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 a passion for uh, the truth in the same way that there is for women about uh, what is yeah. the truth and, and trusting our feelings. They're more nonlinear. They're more plugged into the right brain and the, and the creative. Uh, visionary side of things. Uh, I think Eckhart Tolle said it's like women just naturally have less ego. Right, right, because they don't have space for it. They haven't been puffed up and made into little petty tyrants and little gods. Yeah. Unless uh, the unevolved (laughs) or unenlightened feminine tries to to get along in that that patriarchal paradigm and they will use they will use a distorted feminine to be able to, to survive or to get their way. Um, but then that sometimes in the case of, you know, a lot of female people who are entrepreneurs or CEOs becoming completely disconnected from their femininity and, and falling apart emotionally. Um, you know, right. hitting brick, brick walls right, left and center. I have a guy in Utah that works with all right. these high powered millionaire, you know, right. executives who are right. completely and totally at the end of their rope as women. Sure. Sure. Well, yes. And uh, uh, a lot of men are falling apart as well because their identities are attached to their work and their work isn't happening and, and they don't know what to do with themselves. Or in the wake of, of 20 years of, of the, uh, the divine feminine or however you yeah, want to yeah. think about that yeah. arising, uh, they don't have a sense of what their identity is anymore. Right. I think That's there's what a I'm great, saying. great swath of, of men that I think this is why there's a gravitation toward things like the Proud Boys in in America, but also gravitation back into tribal consciousness that has happened in the world of Islam. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, I've quoted, that's well said, my friend. I've quoted um, Rianne Eisler and her book, The Chalice and the Blade. And she says, look, folks, these fascist groups, they rise and they fall very quickly because if you don't have the feminine in agreement to support the masculine, it ain't going far. You see? No. It's not going to no. happen. But yes, no. th- these are these moments when, um, you know, people want simple answers and they want to uh, feel better than others. God bless them, whatever. Yeah. And they, they, they seem to have this thing of like, things were better in the old days when it was more, everything was more under sort of centralized control, a downward for, facing hierarchy. And it wasn't better. You well, know, the, it was we, better it's for funny their, how we misremember things. It's sure. Just I mean, it, it might've been better for the white race, quite honestly, yeah. in, in the States 40 years ago than it is today, but it, it certainly wasn't better for the black people. It wasn't no. better for the women. Interjection. Anybody who hasn't seen the trial of the Chicago Seven. Yes, I was going to bring it up. Please, please, please. You don't realize how contemporary that movie is until. My friend, until you're you reading my it. mind. That was literally a sentence out of my mouth. Both of those <laughs> statements, truly. Yeah. So let's yeah. go there. It's brilliantly well done. Aaron Sorkin kills it again. Yeah. 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 Well, Sasha Baron was my favorite favorite oh, he's guy amazing. who stole the show, stole the show. <laughs> Sasha Baron Cohen as uh, as Father, Abby Hoffman. No. <laughs> Well, Julius Hoffman, I've never, I knew how bad he was, but I never right. see how I was on betray, uh, portrayed so right. elegantly, dastardly as yes. what Franklin Jella did. Yes. But, you know, I do just go watch it on Netflix. Somehow it's in the theaters, apparently in the U.S. too. 
Right. So if you're in the U.S., do take yeah. it in if you can yeah. catch yeah. it. Well, as um, you're saying, because it's so timely, because yeah. the same battles are being fought today about, uh, you know, cynicism and honesty and uh, all the rest of it. Yeah. Exactly. Very, very good. Very, very to the point. Uh, I think this is one of those situations where, you know, if you want validation, like you've been validating kind of what we're saying, talking about here today with what Patricia's saying, mm. validation of the art, the form of the art, uh, reflecting and also leading uh, whatever the next thing is going to be. So artists and poets and, and movie makers, if you will, some of them are really good at plugging into where things are going before they've even gotten there. Oh, yeah. You know, so I'm sure this film was in its works last year before COVID. Sure, sure, so sure. Who knew that the release date for that would be occurring during this, just yes, like the release yes. date for... Dr. Shoshana Zupov's book, uh, Surveillance Capitalism, how timely that was in, in December of last year, how yes. timely um, uh, The Social Dilemma was coming out right. when it did. Right. And right. all exactly. these things were seeded pre-COVID yeah. and yeah. pre, yeah. Um, you know, all this happening. So yeah. we got to understand saying, it's like uh, going back to the movie V for Vendetta and, and V tells Zivi, um, artists use lies to tell the truth right so well, they make a storyline a storyline or a script is in a sense it's a lie it's make-believe but embedded in that is something truthful this is why i used to sit in front of paintings of the masters at the philadelphia museum of art and and see all kinds of messages that the old masters of the 12th 13th 14th 15th 16th century left in their paintings describing the social conditions and uh, of their time and what the protocols were. Every uh, poet, every po every artist is a criminal. Every poet is a thief. All kill their inspiration and sing about their grief. Ooh, who said that? Bono. Huh? Bono. Bono. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, he's good. He's got some goodies. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, man, all the way. Uh, we're going to do this thing, you know, whatever it takes. Uh, <laughs> captain, my captain, as they say. Yeah, it's uh, it's exciting times. Um, well, not a boring. There's nothing boring about it. No, no, not it's, all. it's always it's always, uh, you know, the I was just reading to Miguel here. There's a quote, Do you know, Teal Swan. She's, she's yeah, her, yeah, I like her. I like her energy, her beauty, her, her fearlessness. And she says, basically, uh, you know, whatever shows up, uh, make make uh, make your peace with that, uh, because it is a gift to you. The quote from Neil, uh, you know, uh, God says, I've sent you nothing but angels. So no matter mm -hmm. how dark and confused and malevolent these uh, forces are, somehow we're asking for it and we're saying it's going to help us. I think that one of the things, yeah, in, in regards to that, I think one of the things to, and I think Neil alludes to that a couple of times or the voice of, of spirit through him. I no. think one of the things to remember is that uh, if we walk, if we can stand in that transpersonal perspective and say yeah there is only one thing there is only one of us in the room that includes all of these so-called villains yeah at the same time the um we are at choice as to what we do with what we observe and follow what works and yeah. if 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 um if these are i don't i think they're not lessons so much as opportunities I agree. Um, there's nothing for us to really learn. It's about remembering. And so there's a portion of or growth or our, our, you know, of that, which is part of consciousness that isn't remembering. Well, that's right. They're, and that's what, that's, that's what's in that tape. I was going to, I, really, okay, I was okay, sending you right, is okay. that basically okay, the dark out. forces do not realize uh, the light that they are. Sure. Um, sure. Sure. Let me, let me share with you. Uh, very briefly, as we as we wrap up here, a hypnotherapist was working with a patient. You may have read this. Uh, I can't remember her name. It's an Indian woman, and uh, she the woman uh, that she was dealing with had migraines. So she asked mm -hmm. the woman in the session who's under to go into the darkness, and she finds the darkness, and the darkness starts speaking to her. And then she mm -hmm. says, "Well, darkness, will you let go of her uh, pain so she can she can heal?" And the darkness says, "No, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to let go of the pain. That's all I know." is my yeah. ability to get her in pain. So the therapist says, look into the center of yourself and see if you can find a little tiny speck of light. And the darkness does and says, yes, but I'm afraid. And she says, will you trust me? 
enough to go into the light. So long story short, my mm -hmm. hand to God, the darkness goes into the light. The light becomes the darkness. The darkness becomes the light. And then she, uh, an angel literally comes into the session, which this person had no idea. And the angel invites the darkness to leave the person's mind. And they never had another migraine after that. Yeah, that's integration. Well, yes. Yeah. So the, the darkness, the darkness and the light are both alike. And our work is to understand that and master that somehow. Yeah, I, I, it's it. Can I get yeah, away with it's that? hard to say exactly. That's going to change for each person involved. I think sure, sure. it's going to it's going to take a different form because we all have our unique story. It, 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 yes, exactly. Uh, and like we're saying, it's always in the moment, Isaac. We, there, you know, the map is not the territory. We're we're here to live in the moment. Yeah. Um, let's see. Are we going to get together next week? If you like, it's my pleasure. Um, let me take a look. See at the calendar. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I do. I know you have probably run soon. I've got to do the same. I've got I've got wet newspapers that need picking up from the downstairs. <laughs> yes, you do have to go soon. Okay, um, very important. The uh, I think today <laughs> Tuesday seemed to work really well. So why Great. don't we go again for next week? Same Thank you. same bat time, same bat channel. Thank you. Thank you, Batman. Sounds Thank good. you, Robin. Yeah, <laughs> Commissioner Gordon. To, to the Bat Cave. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. On that jolly note, my brother. God bless you. God, God bless, bless you, you too. Thank and you. and uh, Gaia bless everybody. And uh, for goodness sakes, if anybody anywhere is really struggling, don't sit in isolation and not do it. Do something. Get a hold of somebody. I'm not Gaia. I know you're pointing to me. You know, I do one aspect of this, you know, sort of emotionally heart centered astro uh, analysis, but it's not about your chart. Your chart isn't you. It's, not, it's a portion of you. But I'm saying anybody, anybody, reach out to somebody sure. who will listen, who will support you. Sure. Because um, things are not, you know, if things get rougher, and they will, um, we have to, we have to hold out <laughs> our hands to others. And sure. it's, it's not going to, yes. you know, People are going to be looking for for that help, and you can't uh, don't turn anybody away because you never know sure. who's going to be there for you when you need it. Sure. Let me add to that. Isaac and I are both freaking brilliant at what we do. We've been doing this for decades, and we're ready for the big game. And if you can find us and get some time with us, you're damn lucky. That's my that's opinion. right. And don't forget, <laughs> we've been doing it all our lives. We just didn't know it. <laughs> exactly. 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 Uh, bless you, bless you, brother. Huh? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so you, you too. And everybody you you contact and everybody you you help or or whose life you affect and in a positive way. Thank you very much, Lou. My pleasure. My pleasure. Have a great day. My best to Shelley, and uh, I'll talk to you next week. Yeah, okay. chat with you all next week. Bye. Bye, right, buddy. Peace. Cheers.